Hi. Hot day and hot lights in the laboratory today. You're probably going to see me sweat through this one, but it's worth it. Today we're going to talk about the Bose Quiet Comfort 35. This is their latest release of their full size over ear uh, noise canceling headphone, and with this iteration, it's gone wireless. <clears throat> I've reviewed Bose noise canceling headphones for a long time, and in each and every case, uh, they had the best, uh, in my view, uh, noise canceling headphone uh, at the time, both in terms of how well they get rid of outside noise and in terms of how good they sound. Um, noise canceling headphones historically have sounded wretched. Um, if you go to the article on Interfidelity, which is linked underneath this video, I'll explain it in quite some detail and I really don't have the time or really the skill to explain it all carefully uh, on this video, but um, bottom line, noise canceling in headphones is a very, very difficult thing to achieve well, and Bose has just nailed it over and over and over again. Um, I've just not heard anybody's headphone that bests them um, so far. Uh, quick look at the uh, the Bose Quiet Comfort 35. This is what it looks like. It's a full size uh, sealed headphone. It has electronics in the cups. Um, the uh, uh, adjustment is uh, secure and stays in place. It's really a very comfortable headphone. It's light on the head. The headband pad does touch mainly in the, a little portion of the top of my head, but it's um, uh, such a light headphone that it really isn't bothersome at all. The ear cups, which are now sweaty, the ear cups are kind of uh, maybe slightly larger than average for a, a headphone of this size. Um, and the, the pads are a very nice quality um, a grade of protein leather with memory foam underneath. Um, but the really cool part is the headphone uh, driver is angled and you can see the back of the cup goes quite deep behind here. So the pin of your ear is really has plenty of room inside the headphone. So these, is, is, despite the fact that they're kind of an ordinary size, they have an extraordinary amount of space. Uh, given that size. <clears throat> um, the build construction is mostly plastic. It is available in this silver color and also a black um, color. The uh, headphones come with uh, this dandy little carrying case. They fold up um, in kind of an unusual way, but they do fold up quite compactly and fit into the case. Uh, also included is a a uh, four foot cable, a very short USB cable for charging, and this um, in this socket right here, a little airplane adapter that has the ability to fold away one of the pieces so that it's used, it can be used in both ways. Um, I would say this is a, a solid accessorization for this headphone. The case is really nice. Um, uh, because it mostly is able to do everything it needs to do without very many accessories. So this is, this is plenty. Um, the one gripe I have with this headphone is that the cable that comes with it is four feet long. It has a uh, 2.5 millimeter TRS plug on the headphone end. It goes in the right earpiece. 3.5 millimeter TRS plug on the player end. But it has no remote or mic on it. And what that means is, if you're not using these headphones in Bluetooth mode, you cannot use them with the phone. So even if they're active and wired, you can't use them as your headset for the phone. And I think that's really a, a mistake. They should have put in a one button remote on this cable. It, that seems silly. Um, the sound quality of these headphones is very, very, very good for a noise canceller. Relative to other headphones, let, let's say the Audio-Technica ATH-M50, not the M50X, the sound quality I would characterize as some sort of similar in terms of overall quality. So it's, it's quite good. 
Um, but of course, it's it's a noise canceller and quite good for a noise canceller is just kind of average for a decent uh, headphone around two or three hundred dollars. Um, uh, when you're using it passively on the wire, so when the battery runs out and you're using it on the wire, the sound quality is somewhat uh, rougher. Um, almost all of these headphones, when you turn the power off, the quality, the sound quality diminishes. That happens because engineers uh, um, really aren't too worried with the the acoustics of the passive mode of this thing. They really just want a well-behaved driver and then they fix the tonality with the digital signal processing. There is a lot of digital signal processing going on in these headphones when they're active. <clears throat> Nonetheless, when, with these headphones passive, uh, they have a good solid bass. They have kind of a boxy mid-range sound. The treble is nice. The overall balance between the three ranges is, is pretty good. So I would say this is one of the better sounding noise canceling headphones when run passively, which is, which is pretty cool. Once you turn the power on, whether wired or Bluetooth, um, it changes dramatically because the DSP kicks in and um, the bass is awesome it's just it is somewhat elevated above what would be measured as flat but it is not excessively uh, uh, elevated the the rise uh, starts a little higher than I would normally like to see except it is such a gentle rise that there's really no sense of the bass bleeding into the mid-range at all the bass extension is phenomenal uh, measured down to 10 Hertz pretty easily um, the distortion in the bass is uh, on the 100 dB uh, setting is ab about 1%, which is actually quite good. I mean, a lot of headphones at 100 dB will go to 2 or 3% distortion pretty quickly, and these don't. Um, the mid-range tonality is really, really good, very uh, even and smooth, coherent. Um, everything sounds very... Um, much as you'd like to hear it, I would say that the one area is the presence region is a little relaxed, and so the voices are sound maybe just a, a bit veiled. Uh, the treble is troublesome. Um, the treble response on these headphones, it, uh, I, I always, I hear this a lot on headphones, or I hear this quite often on headphones. It's almost as if they're being driven by a, a crinkled cellophane driver. It, it has this kind of, uh, squeakyish uh, excess in the in the sibilance range and it, it's not harsh it's not uh, piercing or anything like that it's just some extra stuff around the uh, um, treble notes and especially in that sibilance area um, I did find that this was a problem if I was listening to poorly recorded music or music with a lot of treble energy metal or something like that which I don't normally do anyway but but with that kind of music, I would get fatigued after about a half an hour. I just had to take them off because it was, it was just too much. But um, with well-recorded music, music that's not quite so energetic, um, it was easily listenable. And remember, when you're wearing these, you're typically doing so because you're in a noisy environment. And just the ability to have the, the outside noise attenuated allows you to listen at a lower level, which means that... You know, yeah, they may be fatiguing a little bit if you, under the right, you know, the wrong circumstances. But if you were on an airplane and you had a choice between between listening to an Audio Technica M50 or these, you would probably have a better listening experience with these because you didn't have to raise the volume so high to get the signal to noise ratio up over against the ambient noise. So, um, <clears throat> so the treble's a little troublesome, but I would not say it is. Um, a fatal flaw. I would say it is a noticeable flaw, uh, but I would also say that compared to all the other noise canceling headphones, it's just way better. So, yeah, I can I can pick away at that, but um, you know, you're on a noise canceling headphone, you're just not going to get anything better. When you're running this headphone wirelessly, it does an interesting thing. As you turn the volume control down on the headset, and I'm supposed to go through the controls, this turns the power on, and then when you push it one step further, it turns the Bluetooth on and, and starts the pairing mode. And then these buttons here are the, your normal uh, play volume control buttons, phone answering, and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, in wireless mode, 
if you turn your phone up all the way or one click away from the top is really probably better if you if you turn your phone up and then use these volume controls to turn the volume down they have what they call an in, intelligent volume control or something like that it basically amounts to they built in some Fletcher Munson curves into this headphone so when you turn the volume down you still get some thump in the bass and it's it's noticeable it's easily noticeable that that uh, at low volumes you're better off turning the volume down on the headphones rather than on the player um, so that's pretty cool um, uh, at any rate, I, I love these headphones. These are going to go up on the wall of fame in a heartbeat. If you're a, an air traveler or somebody like that, you know, please, uh, they're 349 They're worth every penny of it, considering the amount of technologies that goes into these things. And, and really, there's a lot I've left unsaid in this video because there's so much to talk about in terms of how noise canceling works and things like that. So check out the article if you really want to have a little bit of a, a deep dive into these headphones because uh, it's worth it. Um, uh, Bose has also just come out with a Quiet Comfort 30 in ear, and I'm probably going to try to get my hands on a pair of those in the future too. These guys just keep knocking them out, so I'm interested every time they do a noise canceler. <clears throat> At any rate, 349 Bose Quiet Comfort 35. This thing kills it. I'm going to go get in front of a fan. <laughs> And I'll see you guys next time.